I used to wonder what type of father I would be. Then I was reminded of the saying that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, so I took a look at my father just so I could see if I was lucky enough what the future had in store for me. But then again, I could never conceive being both a husband and a father by the age of 20. Because if I had to choose, one would have been cool, but then within the next four years, there was two, then three. Now he was a 26-year-old man with five miles to feed. And that's scary. But he never was one for fear. See, he was prepared for this moment long before his family got here. Oldest of seven children and a father that served in World War II, he was strong. So looking after his siblings, he had practiced raising children long before he had his own. And had he known that things were going to turn out this way, I wonder if he would have done things differently. Because if it were me, I probably would have stopped after Tiffany. I'm just kidding, T. Because I was old enough to remember the fifth day of November in 1981. When I saw the look in my father's face after the birth of his third son, the baby of the group. So it must be true that he would be the worst one. Older brother Will. My father's namesake because he was the first one. And I, well I was caught in between. Not the first, the last, or the only girl, I was the middle one. I hear that most children in that position suffer to have some type of syndrome. But my father, he had the remedy. There may have been four other people in that house, but at times he made it seem like it was only him and me. In him I see what it means to be a real man, and I decided when I was 10 that that is what I want to be. Never had much yet, never wanted for anything. Dedicated. His entire life to the well-being of his family in order to ensure we made it. And we all did, following the advice as an adult that I thought to be insults as a kid, a provider, might whip you for being disobedient that morning, but by the afternoon he stood beside you. His faith was unyielding, gave praise because he was blessed and regardless of the test in his life, if he was able, every Sunday he was in the building, building a family with a foundation of faith, a strong belief system he believed in instilling in his wife and in his children. I often wonder why my dad's faith was so strong and to his beliefs he strictly heeded. Had this hunger for the truth and even in my youth I remember he would often feed it. Had his daily scriptures in hand and every day as planned he'd be sure to read it. See I realize now the reason he invested so much into his faith is because he knew that eventually he'd need it. See he never was a man that pursued a lot of wealth. Just wanted to provide for his family, serve our God, and take care of himself. But life would give him something else. Because as men, we don't often intend for the loss of good health. But my father lost his. Stripped of the ability to play with his kids, but he didn't fold. You could see the physical pain from the crown of his head to the tip of his toes. The radiation had taken his toll, but he stood fed fast to the goal. May have had to let go of some of his plans, but he would still stand as the head of the household. His pace was steady but slow. Some of his material possessions he had to let go. And his wife was soon follow but he refused to place any blame call on his name like Joe yet the losses continued to mount started to lose his kids and to some degree he even lost me not realizing how much that time away from him would eventually cost me realizing the air of my ways I spoke to him one day expecting for him to fault me but he welcomed me back with open arms Send thanks to the heavens for the return of his son and I for the return of my father. In a day and age when some men choose not to even bother, my dad did everything he could to take care of me through hell and high water, even on the days I didn't deserve it. And even though I know he is not perfect, he is the closest thing that I have ever known. He often asked me why I would never really talk about him in any of my poems. It was because I could never convey the words to really tell him how I feel. So I thank God for putting him in my life every time that I kneel. Before every meal, I pray that one day I will amount to half the man he is. Want to tell him I love him until there is nothing else to say then. Continue to tell him some more until he is forth to say when. They say men learn to be men from their fathers. So when asked who is responsible for the man I am, I have to say him. And for instilling in me my core beliefs for every time. I pray him. So it's with this humble heart I give thanks for Willie Back Hawkins, Senior, my father. Amen. <laughs>